Okay, <clears throat> this is my model of the San Francisco Bay. This um, would be the south end of the bay. Um, there's a town there called El Viso, and there's a lot of salt marshes down in this area because it's very shallow. The water in the San Francisco Bay is a mixture of salt water and fresh water. We call it brackish water. Oh, I've got to sink my little ray there. Some of my animals are floating. This is a um, sea lion, uh, many of which come sometimes into the bay. They're usually out a little bit more um, along the ocean coast, but they do sometimes um, mistakenly, they can wander quite a ways inland. Here's a shark, a fish, a hermit crab, a ray. Um, that's all I have. I was hoping to actually have some um, seabirds because since we're talking today a little bit about pollution, they are some of the animals most affected by pollution um, in the San Francisco Bay. So um, we are going to, come here fishy, we are going to <clears throat> be modeling what happens during an oil spill. And oil spills can happen in the ocean, they can happen in the bay, they can happen lots of different places. They happen when boats that are carrying oil um, accidentally rub up against a rock or a pier, piers being these things here that hold up the bridge. And um, it also happens in much smaller ways. It happens when our cars drip oil along the roads. And we'll talk more about, about that um, at the end. But it happens when a truck on the highway um, that's carrying oil or fuel um, gets in an accident. And then that is maybe over here along the 101, real close to the edge um, of the shore, and it kind of drips into the bay. This is a very fragile ecosystem. So this would be like in this area would be around San Francisco airport. Down here would be like where Hillbrook is over in this area. Um, over here would be like Alameda and Oakland. And there's actually another bridge and there's more details. <clears throat> this, did I mention this is our Golden Gate Bridge? So what's underneath this bridge? If I took a boat and I went and went underneath the bridge, do you know where that would go? It would go to the Pacific Ocean. The Pacific Ocean is just outside and a bay is an area that's surrounded mostly by land, but with a little bit of an outlet um, to the ocean. So I used clay as the perimeter or the um, coastline around the bay. These um, red dots here are, they are meant to symbolize birds, big communities of birds because um, a lot of birds come through the San Francisco Bay when they're migrating between Canada and Mexico. It's called the Pacific Flyway. They're flying through and they stop here to eat. The San Francisco Bay is a habitat that is um, home where many ocean living creatures come to have their babies because it's more safe. There's not as many predators. Um, and it's more protected. So um, sharks come in and have their babies big. Um, there's many rays that live here and I'll show you more pictures of the animals that live in the San Francisco Bay. I used to work at a place called the Marine Science Institute around in this area and we would take boat, a boat out um, onto the bay and we took children out and would put down nets to catch and, and study what was in the bay and then we would release them when we were done. Okay, so let's try out, and I'm gonna pour a little bit of oil into our model here and then we can do some learning about that. So when oil spills, um, oil is a, a really tough material because it's very greasy 
and it has some some habits that can make it kind of challenging some properties that make it challenging and in particular it coats the animals that live there and a lot of the um, the vegetation which is the plants that live along that are along the edge and are food and shelter for many animals so um, when this happens um, out in the ocean or in the bay we have organizations that will go and try to clean up the oil spill and it's a real challenge so us trying to figure it out today um, is a good thing to model and to think about especially on a day like earth day when we are trying to think about how our actions impact the environment around us. Okay, I'm gonna get some of my materials here a little closer so that I can get to work on this. Oh, and you know what? I think I brought R2D2 too. I think R2D2, let's see. He's gonna, he's gonna come sit over here. We gotta have R2D2, okay. So if we were to try to scoop up oil, let's see what happens. That's gonna be my first thing. I'm gonna, I have um, then some paper towels. I have some cotton that we can try. Um, just to try some different things to pick up oil and to make some observations. So if I really gently kind of scoop it un underneath there, some of it comes onto my spoon and some water as well. And I can um, put that over here in my pan and that, that works actually not too bad. But what happens um, in the bay and in the ocean is that when there's oil spills, the wind and the currents and the waves break up that oil. And R2, behave. Uh-oh, now R2 is covered in oil. Okay, R2, we'll try to clean you up a little later. Okay, so you can already see that the oil, just from R2 spilling, is coming over here. Now it's at the shoreline. So now I'm in a little bit more trouble because there's all kinds of seabirds and animals that live there. Oops, it's creeping along and it's going already underneath the Golden Gate Bridge. So I better get to work here. I don't want it going out to the ocean where there's more animals um, that can be affected by the oil, especially at the shoreline. So that's working okay, but I've already got a, a big splot over here and it's already kind of sucking here along the timeline, along the shoreline. So I'm gonna try a little, I'm gonna try this paper towel and see if the paper towel can suck up any of the oil. And actually what I see it's doing, it's actually pushing away the oil and it's sucking up the water. So that's not, that's not helpful. That's not what I wanna be doing. Okay, I'm gonna try this cotton, and um, I'm gonna try right here along the shoreline and see if I can suck up. Yeah, and it's kind of doing the same thing. It's kind of sucking up the, um, the water. I got a little bit of that oil drop there, but I'm not getting too much. Hmm, so now I've got oil drops kind of all over the place here, and it's spreading, and that's one of the hardest things about oil is trying to contain it so that it doesn't affect, spread and affect wildlife all over. One thing I can do is try, this is Dawn dish soap, and this is what wildlife um, rescuers will use when they're rescuing seabirds that are covered in water and oil. Um, you can see there's little ducks on the front of it, and that's because Soap is one of the things that really helps with oil. So let's see what happens. Hopefully you can kind of still see the oil. Let's see what happens when I put a drop. Were you able to see that? It pushed all the oil to the edges. So that's good because it kind of disperses the oil and push its way, pushes it away, but it pushes it to the sidelines and that's where all the animals are. So, um, and putting um, soap out into our environment is not um, something that we can do um, very easily or is it desirable because it affects all of the balances um, of the chemicals in the system. But it can be useful for things like cleaning the animals. So when I am ready to clean off R2 and my sea creatures, 
You see that blob of oil right there floating. I can put a little bit of soap on my paper towel and it does help to break that soil, that oil off and for me to be able to get him cleaner. So that's really the usefulness of it. If you can imagine oil and all the little feathers of seabirds, it really can be quite a problem. It's not so much for the animals underneath because the oil is less dense than water and so it floats on the top. But for the animals like the marine mammal that have this dense fur and that oil gets in their fur and for the seabirds, the seabirds actually can no longer fly once that happens. Okay, now we're going to add another element to our model. This is a piece of paper here that I've added with um, lots of different color on it to represent different kinds of pollution that happen on the land surrounding the bay. So these are maybe the foothills where Hillbrook is near Los Gatos and Saratoga. The black lines represent the streets where we travel and the highways where we travel. And as we drive, the rubber of our tires gives off a black dust. It kind of wears down the tire over time. And that dust um, kind of settles there on the road. Um, it also represents the oil that drips from our cars onto the road. The um, red dots represent some plastic litter, places where people, may, they, they probably didn't mean to, but they left a plastic bottle or a plastic bag behind and it's um, kind of stayed in the ground. Some of the other colors represent chemicals that we um, put on our plants sometimes that are, that are not as natural for fertilizers or to kill weeds or to kill um, bugs we don't want. And those things just kind of live in and around on the ground. But when it rains, there's something called runoff. And that rain carries those chemicals down. So this is a visual of that. So I'm gonna spray um, the paper here. And let's see what happens to those things as it rains. and where those chemicals end up. Oh, look what's happening to our bay. As these chemicals drain and drip down the paper and into the water, it affects all the living things that are there. It gets carried into the bay. And from the bay, some of them get carried into the ocean. And that really affects the wildlife that's living there. So it's really important that we are cautious, even though we're not right living on the bay, it's important that we're aware, that we're careful, and that we're taking care of what we put on the ground, we're picking up our pieces of trash, and we're thoughtful because the things that kill the bad bugs even kill the good bugs. And the things that kill the weeds, that gets into the soil. And it's chemicals that we've learned over time are really bad for us and for the wildlife. So on Earth Day, let's be especially careful, especially thoughtful about our choices. If we have a choice of not using plastic, let's not do it. If we have a choice of using a reusable glass instead, let's do it. If um, I have the option to not use a straw, let's do it. If I can take a shorter shower or turn off the lights when I'm not using them, let's do it. Let's take care of our earth, take care of our bay, take care of our ocean because almost 80% of our earth is covered with water. And water, the oceans of our planet are all connected. What happens in our bay and what happens in our oceans happens across the world.
here's a few of the animals that make the San Francisco Bay their home. Leopard sharks, this is called a goby, yellowfin goby. This is a Pacific halibut, a fish that, it's a really cool fish. It lives on the bottom of the ocean and what happens is its eyes have moved. Um, when it's born, it has one eye on each side of its head and one of the eyes moves and rotates over to the other side as it gets older and it lives on the side, um, on its side, on the ocean, digging and eating clams and crabs out of the, the water, excuse me, out of the mud. This is um, a surf perch, a fish that lives in the bay. Crabs, this is a seven gill shark who, that comes and um, has its babies in the bay. This is called a sturgeon. They can grow to be very big and they, uh, a lot of them live up in the delta. They're more of a freshwater fish, but they can go into the salt water as well and they have their babies in the bay. And these are bat rays. So these are all animals that are impacted by our decisions and choices.